So, I, yeah, I don't... <laughs> I remember the time I heard Rough Riders the first time, and that was, I was in Kansas, I was with my family, um, and uh, I was getting ready for the, you know, for the, uh, for the whole NFL um, preseason or everything and see if I was going to get any workouts, and that's when I got the news from my agent that, hey, Corey, you're part of the global draft in the CFL. And it just kind of struck me, I was like, oh man, there's a global draft. I didn't even, it didn't even strike me like at the time that there was other opportunities uh, to play football, um, except for like in the NFL. And, um, and that's when I got a phone with a phone call with uh, J.O. who expressed his interest and saying, hey, we'd like to bring you up here and, uh, you know, take your time. You figure out what you need to figure out regarding your, you know, how much you want to pursue the NFL. Uh, but just know you will always have a, a place up here whenever you decide to. So that was a moment when, you know, for me, being uh, being with eight different NFL teams and um, cut and sign, cut and sign, for someone to say that, that showed a sign of commitment to me that I really appreciated. Then I remember, okay, man, I need, to, I need to try to figure out what is, you know, where is Saskatchewan? It was the first time I heard the word Saskatchewan. And I thought it was funny because I uh, just the word itself was uh, very long and it was just different. I was like, this is a different name. Okay, so I went on Google Earth. That's the first thing I did. I didn't even look up information on it. And I just remember typing in Saskatchewan, and I just went down on Google Earth to look at the at the maps. And I think whatever time this must have, it must have been like in the middle of January, middle of uh, February, when it was like you know 50 to 70 percent uh, visibility, and uh, and you can see anything. And it was like in the middle of the prairie roads, and um, and you can see anything but like a tiny road and some white. <laughs> So I was like, oh man, this is gonna be, this is gonna be interesting, you know, we're going to the white tundra. But, um, but for me, I've always had the mindset that, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not so much of like, uh, when it comes to looking at a place and being excited, you know, about the place itself and geographics is, uh, you know, most people wanna be next to a beach or like big city, this isn't that, and that's not how I look at it. You know, for me, it's about the people and it's about uh, the heart of the city, you know, what type of pulse does the city have? Um, I went to McPherson, Kansas, so my foreign exchange here, that's in the middle of nowhere. Then after that, I went to school in Huntington, West Virginia, that's in the middle of the, the valleys or the hills of, uh, you know, the, the Appalachian states of uh, the U.S. So, but for me, I always had the mindset that, man, I can't wait to get to know the people. And that's what's exciting. And then seeing the Saskatchewan Rough Rider brand, once you start looking and reading into that, you understand very quickly how, like, how deep-rooted the, the organization and the name has and how much meaning it has to the people that live here. So it made me very excited to come up here and try to figure out like, wow, I want to kind of get to know the people here. It's been great. It's been really great. I decided to stay here now for the, uh, for the off season. And uh, that was a decision that I made um, pretty much as soon as I got here. Um, I was here for six weeks and I know it was like, that was the aftermath of COVID. So you didn't get to see a lot of, you know, the, the thing, the impressions I already had about the city, you didn't get to see a lot of it because it was, we were very isolated. Um, but when I went back to Norway for the three months, um, I knew uh, what this brand is to the city. I know what the community is, how much heart is here, and I'm a part of the organization. So at that point, I want to commit to being here as well as a part of the community. I don't want to just get up and leave and, and go other places I do enjoy. Uh, I view community as the same thing as family, so I take it very seriously and I, I love it. I love the embrace, I love being a part of it, I like to contribute, I like to, you know, be a person that people also can come to and, and uh, look to for help with regardless of whatever they need. So, so yeah, I made the decision to stay and um, um, I remember Andrew Green uh, came to us early in the season and uh, he expressed to the whole team how there's, uh, there's always, you know, we're athletes and um, it's very, for a lot of people, it's difficult to think of themselves as anything else than athletes. And um, that's something I've thought about for a long time. It's like, yeah, it's very, you know, I love being an athlete. I love everything about it. But there's there's also, you, you have your identity, but that doesn't mean that your whole identity is to be a football player. Your identity, that's a part of your identity. And it's exciting to explore other parts of your life as well and explore, you know, what other colors do you have and nuances things, what other talents do you have and how can you grow as a person. And um, I took him up on that and I, uh, I called him for lunch the next day and uh, sat down with him. We talked for three, four hours and he filled out some, uh, you know, a lot of information and then went to work. And uh, before you know it, he had uh, got me an interview with KPMG and Regina. And um, 
I went to two interviews and then I got a job here at KPMG, so now I'm here for the off season and uh, I am working full time. I am training, I am coaching on the, the weekends with select sports and I got a full schedule, so it's exciting. It's, I'm really getting to, uh, to be part of Regina, you know, and, uh, and get to meet as many people as I possibly can.